we now come back for a second talk. She first talked, I mean, uh, on our, chat, our scientific research program, and now she's coming here as head of EBI to present us the EBI. And uh, yeah, she's going to open up her computer. And while she's doing this, I have to say that I'm amazed that she managed to be both of EBI, which I think is more than a full-time job, and also still being able to produce so much good scientific data. I don't know how you do it. I don't. <laughs> Hello. Can you hear me? Oh. Hello. Yeah. Okay, so um, uh, I'm just going to spend 15 minutes to try and tell you about a little bit about EBI, and um, particularly in the context of. of what we're trying to do and in the context of, of Swissprot and Uniprot. Um, so I think probably everybody in the room knows what EBI is. Perhaps if I could just give you a little introduction about what, what is our particular niche. Um, we provide some of the core biomolecular resources in Europe. As we, we know, there are many, many resources. Um, but the EBI's role, I think, is to provide what I call the reference resources that other people can build additional things on. In the nucleotides, the genomes, the sequences, the structures, expression data, proteomics, and some pathway data. As part of that, we represent Europe in many of the international database consortia, and I'll say a little bit more about those. A major Part of our role, I think, is to help to develop shared standards as an ontologist. We really need to do this, as I think Rolf uh, described and various other people uh, today in terms of the, the go ontology and etc. because otherwise we can't effectively talk to each other in and the databases can't talk to each other. Um, it's rather special at the EBI because we do hold so many of these core data resources. And that potentially gives us the ability to provide good interconnectivity. And this is one of our really major goals going forward. Obviously, the model organism databases are absolutely critical. And I think one of the things, again, that we're doing and we need to do even better is to provide links to other genome and proteome data. And as a, as a personal developer of small, small data resources that many of the bioinformatics research groups around Europe and around the world develop, it's critical that we, we do this and that somehow from these core resources, we can provide the interconnectivity and, if you like, the infrastructure to allow the development 
of these smaller resources that can uh, talk to and relate to, to the core resources. And of course, um, EBI, as a relatively recent newcomer, I've only been there uh, not quite five years yet, um, it really is a, a unique environment for performing research and, and for training. So the databases that we hold really stretch in, in this world of going from molecules to systems, they do stretch, they cover the full uh, gamut in some way. So starting, um, oh, sorry, with the first database, the EMBL data bank, uh, with the nucleotides um, and the genomes within Ensemble and Integrate, the protein sequences that we've heard about in Uniprot, the protein structures in the MSD, which is part of the WWPDB, the, the protein families into pro and domains, the gene expression data in Array Express, the protein protein interactions in Intact, chemical entities in Kebi, pathways, the, the eukaryotic pathways in the Reactome database, and most recently the Biomodels, which is a database to store models of biological systems. Of course, we have research groups as well. There are seven current research groups. And again, we cover, we specialize in different aspects of bioinformatics, stretching all the way from the phylogenetic analysis um, with, with Nick Goldman, uh, right through functional genomics, myself with structural bioinformatics, regulatory networks and regulation with Nick Luscom and Paul Batoni, and again, the computational systems neurobiology with Nicola Lenouvert. And uh, Dietrich Rebholz Schumann uh, specializes in the text mining part. So again, we cover a broad spectrum of very different bioinformatics specialities. But in fact, the vast majority of people at the EBI, we now number about 300, are devoted to the data services, over 70% of those, those people. And really it's that that I'll focus on today, obviously in the context of, of, of this meeting. And here you can see how the staff are divided between the different data resources. Uh, the sequence databases uh, are in various colors from Uniprot and EMBL, the, the, the sequences and the, the nucleotides, the protein intact uh, interactions and protein um, families in Interpro, and then the genomes in Ensemble and Array Express for the expression data, the structural data, MSD and Reactome. So it's a broad spread, but I should say that the sequence databases are still the very, by far the largest part of the, our data resources. And as everybody knows, all the data is gr growing incredibly rapidly, especially the sequence uh, resources. And the, uh, the services that we provide are very widely used. They've been increasingly used since the increase started down in about 2001 as, and has risen very rapidly uh, because the field has grown and hopefully we're providing um, better services in that. But of course, there's a real challenge. And I think this describes somehow the way that I feel about the EBI. We're really heading towards this deluge of data. And somehow, we've got to cope with it. And this isn't just the EBI. Obviously, it's all of us together have to cope with it. And how do we, how do we get through this deluge? And I think the only way we can do it is by sharing the task between different institutes, different countries, different people, and using, of course, the new technologies that are coming forward. And in fact, when, one of the things that really surprised me when I joined the EBI was that all of, the, all of our core databases are part of very strong international collaborations that exchange data freely. And this is really extremely important going forward. And of course, I think the collaboration, which, if you like, is the best and the most illustrative, has been the SwissProt collaboration and that now has evolved into the Uniprot, EBI, Swiss Institute of Bioinformatics, 
and the PIR. If we look at the structural data, you see on the right here, the worldwide PDB uh, with the MSB, the RCSB and the PDBJ. Again, that's an international collaboration where we all share the data. The, the first, if you like, collaboration, the INSDC, the nuclear ties between EMBL, uh, NCBI and DDBJ. Again, those are very important. And of course, our other databases, Ensemble, Reactome, Interpro, and the IMEX partnership also are strong collaborations. So this sharing of the task and the sharing of the data, I think, is a great, um, it's a very, very important part of bioinformatics and biology. And I think it's, it's what we all depend on going forward. And of course, good collaborations are very difficult to achieve. We all know that both in our own research and, and in, uh, in, in making collaborations. And this, not only are they difficult to achieve, they're also very difficult to maintain. And the fact that we're here at 20 years of Swiss Prot, I think, is a real, real challenge to the people involved, to Amos and to Rolf, that they manage to hold this collaboration together and make it work so well that has benefited all of us in what we're doing. And of course, different collaborations work in different ways, and there isn't always one answer. So in, in Uniprot or Swissprot, there's a real sharing of the tasks that go on. So for, th these are just some examples, but there are others. So at SIV, they do the plant annotation, handle the literature, do the annotation platform, do a huge amount of the curation. At the EBI, we handle the automatic annotations through Tremble, the Go annotations and the higher eukaryote annotations. At the PIR, they're going to handle the uni, prop, the uni ref reference sequences that are going. And so there's a sharing of the tasks that need to be done. At the WWPDB with the structural data, there's still a challenge in cleaning up the legacy data. And that task has been shared between the different sites, with different sites focusing on what they, they do best. In terms of collecting data from the community, again, there is a sharing so that um, within the genome data, we process about 15% of the nucleotides. Uh, in the PDB, we take about 16% of the structures of TBI. And in Array Express, at the moment, about 40% of deposited array data comes to Array, Ex array Express. And so this leads to very many joint publications, and it's also funded by very many joint grants. And again, we all know the challenges of collaborations. They're great when they work well, but there's an overhead that comes with them. And getting grant applications together, applying for money together, is not a trivial task at all. And again, it's a great credit to the people who run these resources that they've been able to do this. They also don't actually have much choice because the only way that we can get money from the funding agencies is to show that we, we work together and work together well. The EBI also does its best to help to promote bioinformatics in Europe. And recently, certainly within Europe, the, the, uh, the Americas, uh, the, the non-Europeans probably aren't so aware of the European funding system, but they uh, have very large networks of excellence that are quite complex to coordinate. And the EBI has taken on the coordination of three of these. One by Sapiens that I coordinate, which is really to support bioinformatics research, but it's also to generate a distributed genome annotation. And again, this is part of sharing the task of doing the annotation together. The EMBRACE that Graham Cameron coordinates is more of a technical inter in integration of the tools, uh, probably using web services, but other technologies as well. And the most recent on found that you and Bernie coordinates is an experimental and computational network for functional integration. It, it really is the system's biology going forward. Of course, funding also helps. This is just a little plug to say that although we are reasonably funded, of course, we don't have as much funding as the Americans. And really, in Europe, 
funding for the data resources is still a major challenge and, and that has not been solved yet and we hope that it's going to be solved going forward because I think the whole of the biology community relies on these data resources. We do a huge amount of training and I think next week at ISMB there are very many workshops being held uh, from data resources at the EBI and over the last year for example we ran 67 different workshops including workshops that went round uh, to do that. And we also, through, um, through the uh, networks of excellence, provide training uh, with, with the partners of those networks of excellence. Obviously, as part of the European Molecular Biology Lab, EMBO, we have our own internal research program, we have PhD students, and we very much encourage people to come and visit uh, on Marie Curie studentships to come and stay at the EBI because it is, I said it was a unique environment and it really is because you're together with people who are real experts in handling very large amounts of data in their context and there's always somebody down the hall who knows about something that you need to know about. So it is really a very good environment to work in. Going forward, what are our priorities? Obviously, data integration for everybody. We've talked about it and it will be talked about and it's a real challenge going forward. And this really only happens because of the people who are responsible for the different data resources. And many of these people are here. You will know them. And please go and talk to them about their own resources as we're going forward. And really, um, it's very interesting that being at the EBI, seeing we all know that databases are a combination of science, data, and sociology. And getting things to work together is, a, is, is really one of the biggest challenges um, I think that we face. And I think that this group of people that, that's head of Graham Camera and head of, heads up the service part of the EBI and bringing everybody together to work to the common end is really a, a great um, achievement to do. So who uses our resources? Now at the moment, the main users, as we'd expect, are bioinformaticians and molecular biologists. And we have at the bottom a few medics and agricultural people and neurobiologists. Uh, but I think this is going to change radically over the next uh, five or ten years. I should say that there is an EDI user forum at the ISMB next week at Tuesday, 12.30, so any of you who use the EBI who'd like to come along and hear and make comments on the services are very welcome to come along then. But I think we want to look at it in the broader context. We, if you like, look after, with many other people, the core molecular data. But this is really only part of the much larger picture. We have to think about the medical data resources, the biodiversity data, we heard a bit about metagenomics this morning, and the chemical data resources. Each of these in itself is actually much bigger than our core molecular resources. How we link out to these resources is going to be a major challenge. Not so much to the, well, to the resources, but to the people who use those resources to those communities. And this, I think, is something that we not only have to look after our own back garden, if you like, and look after our own resources, but we also have to work together with the other people involved in that. So we are facing this deluge of data, but we're really very pleased that we have got agreement. We have over the last, I mean, this has only taken five years. I sometimes wonder why these things go slow, so slowly. But we have got agreement uh, funding to secure a new building extension that will permit us to extend. This is the amount of money that we need to extend we, to, to fund the running costs. We still don't have commitment, but we're hoping for an increased commitment from EMBL in the, in the coming sort of financial five-year plan. But the building has been funded and it's currently underway. If you know the EBI, the building, the new part is the bit on the right. And you can see the plan, the current EBI at the bottom and the new wing there. In fact, that building is now under construction. And last week, we had the topping out ceremony. 
So not only do we, oh, am I required to, to sort of uh, head this up, but I also became a, a bricklayer for a day and a tree planter. So this was a great event. And you can see at the bottom some of the EBI staff and the new building. We've got the poles in, if you like, but the, the walls have still got to go in. So that's really all I want to say. And you're all very welcome to come and visit us at the EBI. Thank you. Thank you.